The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. But you know what? Uh, t- tonight at sundown, it's Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement on the Jewish calendar. And I find it interesting that leading up to Yom Kippur is basically a, a wonderful time of reflection. And some of you thought you were under demonic attack when in reality your flesh was manifesting so that on the Day of Atonement you could say, oh man, I got to get rid of that stuff. Okay? Most people, when they think they're under demonic attack, their, fl- their own flesh is beating them up. Now, there's demonic attacks, obviously. But you know what? Everything's tailor-made according to what you've given place to. So let's close some of those doors, all right? And tonight at 6 o'clock, we can enter into the, the blessing of the Jewish calendar and just say, thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Time of wonderful repentance. Are there? Yes, they've got some back there. Okay. Uh, the original version was, was Jesus the Capitalist is at the book table if you want to get them to update yourself. That was written in 2012. The newer book is uh, really just updating it for the last, the things that have been taking place in the last six years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one. Because eventually, Jennifer just updated this book. For the benefit of those watching on camera, I don't see, is the camera on? Yeah, okay. I don't see any lights or anything, so I didn't know. Okay, this is it. Was Jesus a capitalist? And we're advised to change the title. (laughs) Here you go. But it's back there. Same information, except it's not updated since 2012. Things have happened since 2012. Some people say, things have happened since 2020. <laughs> huh? So anyway, let's just pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I believe that you have a relevant word for this time and this season. And uh, timing is one of our anointings to understand the seasons and the times. Uh, kind of like uh, Kingdom Life Church likes to see itself as kind of a tribe of Issachar who had knowledge about what Israel ought to do, what the church ought to do. And one of the things that needs to be decreed and declared in the church is basically what the Lord's speaking to me is, this is a time for your light to shine. And he keeps scripture after scripture, uh, old teachings that I've done years ago, everything came to the surface in a matter of moments and it was like a a supernatural download on Friday and it was like uh, all of it and some of it was even confirmed with people sharing this and that. But I've titled it, um, well I didn't title it that, I titled it Walking in the Light, which is a pretty even title, Walking in the Light, but here's, here's the way it started. You know, the, the, how many know the little children's song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm Gonna Let It Shine? Yeah, it's not a song, it's a commission. You are called to be a light. And I began to see that, that, uh, that what God was saying at this time, and particularly now even in this season, I believe your light is going to need to shine and there's going to be a a need on behalf of believers for boldness. Boldness is not reckless. You got to make a distinction. Wisdom will show you the difference. But it's a time of boldness. It's not a time for secret service Christians and people that kind of hide behind being nice. Um, God's basically saying here, here's, here's the first thing he dropped down. He's saying basically to walk in the light James 1.17, every good and every perfect gift is from above, all right? If the source, this is what he's been speaking. Now, see, I, for me, discernment is extremely important. Discernment 
makes a distinction as to the source of a person, place, or thing. Uh, it's not just the content of what they say or do. I've seen people do good things, but the source was wrong. And the source, from a biblical point of view, is that he is that perfect gift from above, and he comes down from the Father of lights. Now, there's an implication there. If God is the Father of lights, then he's looking for children of light, right? And we know the scripture even calls us children of light. John 3 talks about the choice that people have to make. And I find this interesting. In verses 17 to 21, John chapter 3, it says, That the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation. All right, what's the condemnation? Every good and perfect thing came down from the Father of lights. The condemnation is light has come into the world and people chose darkness. So there's a choice here of the source. Light has come in. It's been made available. But men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. Some of the most antagonistic, angry people right now is... Did you ever notice that in times like this, there's an anti-Christian emphasis because Christians reveal light and light offends darkness. We have one guy uh, comment, yeah, yeah, it's not good to read comments because there's people that comment that don't even know what they're talking about, which is very common nowadays. <laughs> Everybody has access to a computer they can comment. Um, but one of them said, oh, well, if Satan is a socialist, you know what that means? That means God would be a king. I mean, I would be embarrassed to put my opinions on if I didn't know what I was talking about. I'm, I'm cautious even when I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just like, that would make him an absolute monarch. Wow, I am so glad that I've been informed of that observation. I always thought he was king of kings and lord of lords. <laughs> Never thought of that. Uh, so you know what? we got to make a choice. <laughs> but light has come in the world, and the reason you would not receive light is because it's convicting. It would mean that you're wrong and that there's something in you that needs to change. I like that. If... Uh, if I believe in God and it's not real, I didn't lose anything. If I don't believe in God and He's real, I lost everything. Uh, <laughs> and when people reject God, too, it's kind of like, I always say, well, why don't you see if He's real first? And then know whether you're accepting or rejecting based on experience. Because their deeds are evil, they don't want to do that. And they want to stay in the dark. But God's basically saying, light has come into the world, men love darkness. For everyone who practices evil hates the light. And does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light. And so I want to say, you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It needs to be a... A, an expression, not just a little song that the kids sing. And one of the things that it says is, for you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, therefore walk as children of light. We have a commission to do it. And I believe that what's coming next is that light has come into the world, the source is the Father of lights, and He says everything good and perfect comes from Him. And you know the key element that nobody seems to be talking about. You know what the product of your human spirit is creativity. When, when freedom reigned in this country at, in the early founding, we went from ox carts to the moon in a very short period of time. You have creativity as a product of your spirit. And some people like to make an argument, well, it, they didn't murder anybody. 
No, but you can kill the creativity into somebody. You can so stifle them with dependency that you rob them of everything they were created to do. Like Jennifer says, just think if your children, you told your children, honey, I just do everything for you and I'll just do your, I'll live your life for you and I'll, I'll just take care of you and you don't ever have to do anything. Some people would call that love. Yeah, you basically crippled your children by not allowing them to be all that they could be and to do all that God called them to do. When purpose is not understood, I write this down. When purpose is not understood, I'm talking from God's point of view now. When purpose is not understood, abuse is inevitable. It's inevitable. You, 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 you'll find some silly flag to wave, some activity perhaps, but it's dead works. And it'll do more harm than good, even if you call it good. You know, John Bevere hit on something that this whole generation needs to get a grip of. John Bevere says, good is not necessarily God. What people are calling good, if it came from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's still the wrong tree. It's not the tree of life. So good and evil. You know, and, and when Satan gives something to lure you into it, he doesn't give blatant evil. He draws you in with something that sounds good. It's the oldest strategy in the world. Matter of fact, people wouldn't even sin if there wasn't a certain element of, oh, that could be exciting. <laughs> Why would you? So God's basically saying, the source is the father of lights. Choose light. Don't run from the light. As a matter of fact, this is what we're talking about tonight at sundown is the beginning of Yom Kippur and I think it's a, it's a day of atonement wouldn't it be just wonderful if we would ask for a supernatural endowment right now that anything we've gone through in the last week or so anything that manifested in us that wasn't pretty that we didn't tell nobody about <laughs> All right, anything that manifested say that's the kind of stuff I want to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus I want to be washed I want to walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with God and with one another I don't want aught against anyone and let the blood of Jesus continually cleanse me. And when we have Bill Morford in our church, the great scholar who wrote the One New Man Bible, he always said that one of the things that Christians are missing, that in the actual translations we miss the fact that most of what the Bible says is continually. It's a flow. It's a river. It's not a choppy do and don't, do and don't. It's a flow of obedience. And God's basically saying that this is really what, what He wants for us. He wants us to walk in the light, children of God without fault, in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation, which means what? In the midst of the darkness. And this is exciting to me because it's like I'm saying that God is going to shine our light. God's going to shine your light. And to shine a light, though, do you realize that the flesh would have to be broken so that the true nature and the love of God can be shed. So there's a work of the cross. You're to be a light. You're to be a martyr. And a martyr is not just someone who gives their physical life to die, but to die daily so that your light can shine. That's a witness. A witness has, within the word witness, martyr. There's an assumption that it's worth dying for. Is your Christianity worth dying for? And if you say, I don't know, that scares me. Well, I'm, physical death, what about die daily? And what is the number one enemy? Fear. What's taking place now even in our culture? Fear. And wherever it can be capitalized on, on individuals. But if you walk in the light, you shine brightly. You expose the darkness. Darkness isn't going to like it. It's going to argue with you. There's such hatred for Christians right now. Hey, I think unsaved people are just acting like unsaved people are supposed to act. I'm actually surprised they're not worse. I used to have to deal with, when I was a young pastor, some of the most difficult thing is I had uh, a lot of young people in my church that expected, they had this expectation on unsaved people. 
uh, when they gave them food, and we would go into a ghetto area and, and, and take food and stuff, and the people didn't overjoy and clap and applaud them. They went, huh. They said, what else have you got? Is that all you got? <laughs> they were offended. And I'm sitting there thinking, they're just acting like unsafe people are supposed to act. As a matter of fact, they should be acting worse. It's your response that lacks maturity. So God's basically saying, if you are children of light, you're supposed to shine as lights in the world in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation. So anticipate crooked, perverse generation. Anticipate you will be lied to, you'll be manipulated, you'll, they will try to get one over on you. And it was like when I was in the army, I thought that it was kind of unique that if you were from Jersey, New York, Chicago, or if you were from a big city, you were always working an angle. That's just the way the world works. They're working an angle. It's all about them. Even when they do a kind deed for you, it's still what's in it for me. As a matter of fact, advertising, if you don't advertise, you don't minister to that basic need of what's in it for me, people don't want it. Well, what's in it for me? Here's what got my attention. You know, we preached a great deal on trying to train people to forgive properly from the heart, to walk in the light as He is in the light, and have fellowship one with another. You can't love God and hate people. But His Son will cleanse us from all sin. But here's, here's what really got my attention, and it came as a download. Uh, I've read the scripture uh, dozens of times. Uh, how many are familiar with uh, Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus, right? Okay. So it's said in Acts 9, 3, a light from heaven shone all around him. What was he doing in the meantime? He was part of a crooked and perverse generation. He was killing Christians. And all of a sudden, a light shined all around him, and he fell, fell down. I'd say it was a pretty bright light when you fall down, right? It was probably a little shock therapy. I think you should be shock therapy in a crooked and a perverse generation. Shock them with your response. A light from heaven shone around him, and he fell to the ground. Now, later in Acts chapter 16, he's being confronted with King Agrippa, and he is quoting what Jesus actually told him. Here's what he told him. He says, So I said, he's telling King Agrippa, So I said, Who are you, Lord? <laughs> and he said, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. We already knew he fell down. Rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. There's that word. Say it back to me. Purpose. purpose. All right. All right. For this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both to the things which you have seen and of the things which I have, will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Here's the commission. To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. That's his commission. And from the power of Satan to the power of God. That's your commission as well. That they might receive the forgiveness of sin and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. There's a scripture that we quote, but uh, I like the Bishop Bill Hammond changed the word for me and it gave me greater understanding. It was many are called, but few are chosen. I used to kind of gloss over that. But he says, really, you could very easily say for many are called, but few are commissioned. There's a process in the commissioning to be a light that shines in darkness. And in 1989, sitting on a swing under a tree, I got the download of the strategy that would take place in a dark hour. End times is the way God told it to me, but end times is anything after Pentecost. Um, but I believe it's for such a time as this, and that's what our books reveal as well. But he says... The strategy in the dark times 
is for a light to shine in the midst of darkness, and you will strike the enemy, Judges 6.16, you will strike the enemy as one corporate man, as one man. Now, it wasn't one man in the day of Judges that struck the Midianites. It was 300 who functioned as one. So if you're going to be commissioned to be a light that shines in darkness, the beautiful part of that commissioning was the Lord said, Surely I will be with you. This is to Gideon, who was frightened, by the way, hiding away in the darkness. Surely I will be with you, and you will defeat the enemy as one man. Light would shine in darkness. How many are familiar enough with the story to know what happened? First of all, he said, I've got to test you people. Not everybody is com going to be commissioned because many are called, but few get commissioned. There's qualifications for commissioning. There's qualifications on your behavior as a believer. There's a qualification in order for your light to shine rather than what? Hiding it under a bushel? Aren't we commanded not to do that? A bushel could be you hiding away in fear. It could be you avoiding all that God wants you to express yourself. Like I said, there's a difference between boldness and recklessness. But it needs to be fearless nonetheless. Now God's basically saying too that if your light shines in darkness, there's some testing. You ready for the test? First of all, Judges 7.3, whoever is fearful and afraid, turn and depart at once. Don't get involved with shining your light when you're afraid. <laughs> Deal with your fear. Then your light will shine. Fear actually obscures your light. And it renders you... Well, Jennifer uses the word murder because you're, the father of the devil is a murderer from the beginning, but he will murder initiative. He will murder your creativity. Creativity is a product of your spirit, and the creativity does not flow when you have angst, hurt, fear, lust, anger, guilt, shame. Any of those toxic emotions stifles your creativity. You want to see a flow like Jennifer gets a download. You get a download in obedience to God, it's because your heart is open to Him. And it's like, whatever you say, God, I will do. Whatever you show me, I will obey. I will develop. I will invest in whatever you're showing me. But he's not going to show you anything if you sit in the dark. Actually, you know, it's interesting. When God appeared to Gideon, who was hiding away, anxious, trying to scrape out a living in, in, in a little pit, God appeared to him as Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And isn't it interesting in our scripture that God of peace will crush Satan beneath your feet? So from the place of peace, love is ruling. The king is ruling. Let the peace of God rule. Jesus is ruling. It's about lordship. It's about making him first place in your life. Not one among many loves, the lover of your heart. So here's the first test. No fear. Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him depart at once. Test number one. Test number two. So Gideon... And a hundred men that were with him came to the outpost of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Uh, they were on the offense, but they followed instructions. Can you follow instructions if God gives you instructions and says, do it this way? Can you do it? Not only do you have to get rid of fear, but you've got to be able to follow instructions. Not your ideas when you're afraid. Most people make the worst decisions of their life when they're fearful. Even if it would have been something that was rational and logical, your timing would be horrible. And fruit is fruit. Fear as a root produces bad fruit. You can't have a bad root produce good fruit. A tree is known by its fruit, and the fruit matches the root or the source. And you want it from the Father of Lights. He's the source. And you're children of light, and you're going to 
sing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? All right. Especially tonight when you repent of everything. Everything negative that's manifested in the last week. The third test. It said, every man stood in his place all around the camp. Judges 7.21. That meant that they had dealt with fear. It meant they were willing to follow instructions and work as a team. I can obey instruction. I can work as a team. Um, teamwork is hard even in a church. You know why? Because everybody goes, what, what am I in charge of? As soon as you, you, you get preoccupied with what's your job, what you're in charge of, you lose an element of working with the team. I always liked it the way Jennifer did when she worked in the office in a medical facility, that if someone else was getting behind and she was caught up with her work, she'd go help them. That's almost non-existent nowadays. That's a horrible thing. It's like, well, that's not my job. So you'll sit and watch somebody get totally buried <laughs> that you could help, but it's not your job. That's a horrible attitude. It's a selfish attitude. God's looking for people that can strike the enemy as one corporate man. Can you work enough together to have an impact? If one can chase a thousand, two, ten thousand. There's too many people that are lone rangers living under a demonic attack that could have been alleviated if you'd be part of something bigger than yourself. <laughs> huh? Just think of it. God placed the solitary in families. It's for protection and power. You know, even, even animals know enough to protect the delicate ones in the herd as long as they don't isolate themselves. Isolation is the best tool of the enemy. I think it's, it's probably almost worn out he uses it so much. If he can isolate you, and trust me, as a pastor over 40-some years, I've heard people who had an issue would say, I think I need to get away and pray. What... <laughs> I think you need to pray about the attitude of getting away to pray. It, quite, it could quite well be that you have issues that need resolved in prayer, no doubt, but getting away is part of it. <laughs> the fourth test, and I love this because this is the word of the Lord as far as I'm concerned. This has deeper meaning than our minds can comprehend right now. But the Holy Spirit is doing this. Judges 7.19. They blew the trumpet and broke the pitchers. You know those little clay pitchers. When they broke it, they broke the vessel. The torches shined. A people that were in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah 9. That's messianic. And it says, and they've overcome. I'm talking Isaiah chapter 9. Read chapter 9 sometimes. It's like 600 years before Jesus. A people who sit in darkness shall see a great light. And the rod of the oppressor, and that's what I want to see happening for everyone that's affiliated with Kingdom Life Church and more, of course, but affiliated with us, is that the rod of the oppressor is broken off your life because we're in agreement with you. That our light's going to so shine. And how does it shine? The clay vessel must be broken. The, the flesh needs to be out of the way to let that light shine. And the best part of the scripture, and there's multiple illustrations throughout scripture of the same principle. I love it. When the light shined in darkness, the enemy was confused. Oh, I just love that part. You know why? Because he tries to confuse us. Now the enemy is confused and so confused that it actually turns on itself. And think about it. Historically, that happens. You see old cowboy westerns where there's a lynch mob and they lynch Charlie. After they lynch Charlie, they start looking suspiciously at each other thinking, well, if they lynch Charlie, <laughs> they could do this to anybody, couldn't you? <laughs> a people who sit in darkness shall see a great light. And isn't it interesting that
that Jesus was the light of the world and Jesus came into the world. Light has come into the world and people chose darkness. But the beautiful part was hundreds of years in Isaiah, a people who sit in darkness shall see a great light. And I believe that light's got to come through you. I believe now is more of a time you say, well, I'm not really much of an evangelist. I'm not much of a witness. You better just recognize that you are created for that light to shine. And the creativity and your gifts and everything God ever intended for you to do needs to be expressed. It was never meant to be suppressed. You were never meant to take your clay pot and confine that light inside a confined, restricted prison. That's what flesh can do. And what usually does that? Fear. God's saying, this, this Yom Kippur asks for the blood of Jesus to cleanse you from all self-imposed restrictions. That's worth writing down. Cleanse me as I repent of all self-imposed restrictions. And you can have all kinds of excuses. I've heard, uh, I had 29 year olds tell me, oh, I've done nursery for two years. I'm done with that. I've graduated. Yeah. Mm hmm. Day's going to come when you're going to have children of your own and you're going to be sent back to kindergarten and you're going to realize you didn't know much at all. Here's that one where they throw stuff at me. You have to admit you are a self absorbed single person. This is when they throw cabbage and tomatoes. Self-absorbed single people. All single people have a benefit of doing things when you want to do and how you do it. That doesn't mean you're all self-absorbed. But it means you have a, a, a focus in your life that it's pretty much you come and go as you please. Remember, remember when Jesus told Peter, Peter, you're like that. You, you're the idea man. You, man. you do whatever you want. You go, come and go wherever you want. The day's going to come when you won't. I think that personal freedom needs to be brought to death. Jesus had personal freedom. My core value is personal freedom. Jennifer's is just like, don't fence me in. But at the same time, there's a part of you that says that he was loyal to the point of death. And he became a bond slave, a voluntary heart attitude to give up his personal freedom to serve the purposes of God. Are you willing to give up your personal freedom to serve the purposes of God? Or do you only serve God when those purposes line with your criteria? This is going to be a time when your light's going to shine and God would bless you exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think when you're on His trail. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Your commission. Surely I will be with you and you will defeat the enemy as one man. And how was that tested? A light's going to shine in darkness. The outer shell of that clay vessel was broken and it confused the enemy. They held torches in their left hand and the light confused the enemy. They became one. Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they put a lamp under a bushel or a basket, but rather on a lampstand. And it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deeds. It's going to confuse the enemy. Many examples in Scripture turn on the enemies. And the part that I like is when the Apostle Paul was relating what Jesus told him to do to King Agrippa. This is the part that I want you to be able to say. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What God showed me to do and to be, I was not disobedient. I took the commission. I fulfilled it. That's the kind of witness that God's speaking to us. But I'll tell you what, before you can have a testimony, <clears throat> there's certain things that are, the enemy uses good to get evil in. Wrong tree, still the wrong tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
and it's not the tree of life, but he uses good to get an inroad. <clears throat> so I'm going to say test it. If you're a note taker, write down this test. Test the things you hear and the things you see. You can't, you can't trust the news, that's for sure. Uh, but you can test it. Test it first by the source. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, but there was also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Test it by the source. Where does it come from? What's the source? When the kingdom of God is the source, the end result will be the fruit will be love. When the source is proper, the fruit will be proper. And when the kingdom of God is a source, the end result will be the fruit of love, life, prosperity, and freedom. You need freedom to express the creativity. There's people that have everything handed to them, but they're create, they have absolutely no motivation. We had a young businessman that went to another country and basically said that what he noticed was getting ahead was like an insult. Doing something with what God gave you was an insult. Who are you to want more? Who are you to better yourself? But it becomes a frame reference of thinking and a false humility. But anything that murders can murder initiative too. It doesn't have to murder your physical body. When you murder initiative, you murder the person. When the Bible says, thou shalt not kill, I hope everybody in this church knows that that's murder. It's not kill. Because then you couldn't shoot a deer, you couldn't do anything. Thou shalt not murder has to do with innocent. And quite frankly, as a believer, the most innocent is abortion for babies. Think about it. In Egypt, they were in slavery. And they were killing the babies. Light came into the world. Jesus came. And they were killing the babies. In each case, they sent a deliverer. There was deliverance. Right now, they're killing the babies. And God's going to send that deliverance. But that deliverance is going to be the light. It's going to be the deliverer himself rising up in his people. Philosophy, art, music, literature, those things are all reflections of a society. But the spiritual force behind them are either for good or evil. They've uncovered, archaeologists have uncovered ancient <clears throat> evil societies and their art was evil. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> Nothing originates from a vacuum. The source. And you are the source of the Father of light. You have a responsibility to reveal that light. Each economic theory comes from one of the two kingdoms. The source is either the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the devil. This is not complicated. Secondly, that's your first test, the source. Where did it come from? The second test is history. History repeats itself. And, you know, probably part of the, the difficulty, if, if you're my age or close to my age, you have experienced a transition that a young person has never seen. And history will repeat itself if you do not know what has been repeating itself over and over again. That, Ecclesiastes 1.9, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, Billy Graham had a good sermon once. He said, but they changed the names. <laughs> there's no new sin. I don't care how bad you are, you can't come up with a new one. But you can change the name. You know, we don't call it fornication and a 
adultery now, we'd say, having an affair. <laughs> right? New ribbon, new package, same. You didn't create nothing new. And evil will always find a new name or a new ribbon to put on evil to make it sound better. <clears throat> Consider the history <clears throat> of free enterprise. It comes from the biblical principles and releases the creativity of the human spirit. That's the primary thing. To release the creativity of the human spirit requires, <clears throat> and as Jennifer shared, where there's freedom. And you know, people say, well, you can preach the gospel for nothing. You cannot advance the kingdom without finances. You cannot. <clears throat> Karl Marx said, socialism is just a step on the way to full communism. It's just a stepping stone. John Dewey, called the father of modern education, said, we don't need to have a radical revolution, just give me the minds of the children. And it's taken place. <clears throat> there's gradual and there's abrupt. But if the root is evil, the fruit is evil. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. Destroy the initiative in the heart, keep people from trying, to steal from them their God-given call and commissioning. Rob, kill, and destroy can be in multiple realms, can it? Doesn't have to be a physical death. Although, isn't it interesting? A true democracy doesn't wage war against another democracy and doesn't kill its own people. But the, the expression that uh, A.J. Rummel came up with, uh, democide, democide. He coined that expression. Governments that kill their own people. So they say they care about people, but in reality they care about their ideology. People are just the building blocks and they get in the way from their ide ideology. And the funny thing is some of these great thinkers that were evil, the great evil thinkers were wealthy in and of themselves, and it was just theory. But they tried to portray themselves as the downtrodden and the poor and the needy. It wasn't even Lenin that tried to uh, dress accordingly to, be, to look like labor? When, was it Lenin or Stalin? What, Stalin. So it looked like you're the common worker when you're raised wealthy and give that impression. That's just plain lying. The third test, and this we already said, you test it by the Spirit. Does it produce life or death in one form or another? The thief's purpose is to rob, kill, and destroy. What was God's purpose? What was the Father of Light's purpose? That you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And the fourth test, does it line up with the Word of God? Well, we, that, that would be a whole other message because we have people quote scriptures out of context. Isn't that a common one? When they'll say, well, communism would be good because didn't, didn't, doesn't it say in the book of Acts they had all things in common? at a selected period of time after Pentecost, they gave it to the church, not the government. Dear Lord, people have these little phrases they come up with and they're, they, they haven't even bothered to research what they're saying. It just sounds good. It also says in the scriptures in Thessalonians, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> well, how dare you? I thought we'd just have everything in common and then you'd give me everything. Eventually, you run out of other people's money. And by the way, that's not charity. You know when they want to redistribute the wealth 
take from the rich, give to the poor. That's called stealing. And it's not charity unless you can give it from your heart with the proper attitude. Somebody taking your money and saying it's charity <laughs> didn't cost them anything. Tested by the Word of God. Fifth element, tested by the fruit. You shall know them by the fruit. False prophets will be known by the fruit. A good tree bears good fruit. Bad tree bears bad fruit. And it's, you can't play with that. It is, it is. The source, the source. The source is the fruit. Now, we fall for that, though, because we can be seduced. The source. See, for me, discernment is if someone says, Oh, T Jennifer, I love your, 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 your dress or your outfit. If they really are jealous and they hate it, the words were nice, but the source was wrong, wasn't it? You have to judge by the source, not by the content, because people try to sell you anything that would appeal to your flesh. So what kind of fruit would it produce if it was carried on and on and on and on? What would it look like? If I did what you're saying, and it was carried on and on, what would it look like? And the last one, and this is uh, Jennifer's soapbox, right? Tested by the life or death. Does it produce life or does it produce death? John 8, 44, isn't it interesting? It was the religious people, too, that Jesus was speaking to. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. How many knew that the characteristic is that he was a murderer? I look for murder in, if murder is involved in the fruit, there's something wrong with the root. I don't know, I, I can't, some of the stuff I hear now is there's people saying, well, you know, abortion is not the only issue. Christians. There's other issues when we vote. Oh, then let the blood of those innocents cry out that you did nothing. I'm sorry. That's, oh, but I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to tell someone else what to do. Well, you tell that to Jesus that you didn't want to tell someone else what to do. Because that's the cry of the blood of the martyrs springing up. And you're going to respond to it with a deliverance or you respond to it with a stick your head in the sand. Test it by life or death. Personally, as a Christian, how could you possibly vote for a platform that murders babies? I can't get past that one. I don't care about the other issues. I don't care about a person's personality. I'm going to stand as a witness against murder of babies because I know the source where that comes from. So, Father, we just pray that in these days ahead, a people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and his name is Jesus. And he's the father of lights, and we're to be children of lights. But I believe that he's calling us for a boldness in this time and in this season, not reckless, but to be led by the Spirit of God and to be sensitive in difficult areas, but at the same time, never water down truth. So, Father, we pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that we would see those things come to pass that you're going to show us what you will do. Isn't that the word we got earlier this year? Watch what I will do. But he's not going to do it independently apart from prayer. There's a sovereignty of God, but there's a responsibility of believers to do their part as well. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that even on this uh, eve uh, of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, cleanse us from all murderous attitudes. Cleanse us from all hate. 
cleanse us from any fear or resistance on our part to be an expression of what God would have for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.